Okay, let's get to the elephant in the room, the economy. You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, we are told, but few economists say they see it. First the federal bailout plan, then came talk of federal infusion of capital into the banking system. What's next? Well, most probably some sort of federal help for the small guy and gal out there because state and local governments are already talking about cutbacks in services, deep cutbacks, lost jobs. LA Business Today welcomes Michael Intrilligator. He is a professor of economics at UCLA. He's also an authority on political science and public policy. In fact, he's authored more than 200 articles on economic theory, math economics, health economics, and his field of research, very interesting, the Russian economy. Professor, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Do you already see some parallels between what's happening to us now and the fall of the old Soviet Union? I do see some parallels. It's really fascinating. Wow. Uh, I've been studying Russia and visiting Russia constantly for the last 30 years. And uh, what happened when the Soviet Union dissolved, uh, they tried to go to a market economy. And they first abolished all the state planning apparatus, the Goss Plan, which was, uh, coordinated everything in the economy. And they said to the enterprises, the state-owned enterprises, privatize yourself and use the market uh, rather than using us, the government. Well, these enterprises were in desperate situation because they previously, under the Goss Plan, got automatically the resources they needed mm -hmm. uh, to produce whatever they were manufacturing, for example, services. Uh, that came to an end overnight. Yeah. And how are they going to fund their operations? Well. In this country, uh, we used to have at least uh, good uh, banks, investment banks uh, and uh, commercial banks and so forth that could provide funding, uh, short-term funding to businesses. Uh, that they didn't have any history of that. There were no banks. Uh, to this day, there were really no banks, as, as we understand banks in Russia. So they were absolutely desperate. There was a huge credit crunch, a disaster as far as credit went. And the enterprises were absolutely desperate to fund their operations. So what did they do? They they borrowed from their workers by not paying their wages. They borrowed from the government by not paying their taxes. They borrowed from their suppliers by not paying what they owed them. Mm -hmm. And eventually everything started to collapse. And I see elements of that in our economy today. When credit is, is not there, when credit is short, uh, things will start collapsing. And one thing feeds on the other. Yeah, of course, the free market there here is somewhat different. But, oh, yeah, but, but, but here's the thing. Uh, when did we really start believing you could sell a bad product and get something good out of it? like a bad home loan. Well, you know, it, it was a bubble. We were caught up in this bubble. It's like the South Sea bubble, or in Japan, they had a real estate bubble uh, as well. Uh, but uh, in these bubbles, you kind of lose track of the reality of the situation. You get caught up in the in, in, the, in the sweep of things. Momentum. That's right. The tulip mania in Holland. Yeah. That's the case. South Sea bubble. And bubbles occur repeatedly in, in economic history. This was a type of bubble, and people thought, you know, nothing could go down. Everything was going to go up. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago, I saw a cartoon of two young stockbrokers, and one was saying, you know, I saw an old guy the other day, he said, once the stock market went, was actually going down, they didn't believe it. <laughs> they, all their experience was the stock market went up. Well, the same thing was true in this bubble here, the housing bubble. Every month, those house prices would never go down. They would constantly go up, and people extended themselves over and over and took out loans uh, on houses that they really could not afford. Meanwhile, the, the banks and other financial institutions uh, were very happy to provide them loans because they could securitize the loans, something they didn't do earlier. All right, let's straighten out the record. Are we in a recession or not? I believe we're in a recession, but I have to say that some of my colleagues don't think so. Uh, I think we are. The official arbiter, the official uh, agency that designates whether in a recession or not, interestingly, is not a public agency. It's a private organization called the National Bureau for Economic Research, NBER. And they have so far not said uh, whether we are in a recession or not, but many people have been saying we're in a recession. All the signs to me show we're in a recession, not this year, but early next year. We'll cut back in, in retail, both soft and hard, lost jobs, uh, property values dropping. Sounds like a recession. Walks like a duck. Talks like a duck. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, uh, big ticket items have fallen precipitously. Uh, new car sales have fallen 30, 40 percent. It's amazing. Uh, the housing market is, of course, dead. Uh, people are reluctant to go shopping in the malls because they, they've already maxed out their credit cards. They don't want to take on any more debt. And uh, using their home as the uh, as a piggy bank or an ATM, which was very common. Uh, All right, judging, judging from what you've seen so far, how long is this going to take? I mean, you're talking about six months to a year. You know it's going to be a lousy Christmas for a lot of retailers. Yes. But, you know, how long is it going to take? A lot of people are talking about this being a few months, six months, a year. I'm much more pessimistic than that. I think the closest analog we have, what we're turning into today in this country, is the economy in Japan of the 1990s, which they call the lost decade. 
everything was going down. They tried desperately all kinds of moves, monetary and fiscal policy. They tried lowering interest rates. They were the lowest ever recorded in, in, in history, the lowest interest rates. They tried massive public spending, fiscal policy. They tried, uh, they put concrete over everything that they could think of in, in Japan. Nothing helped. And they were stuck for 10 years in this uh, so-called lost decade, the 90s. I, I visited Japan several times during that period, and the people I spoke to, fellow economists I spoke to, they were extremely despondent, uh, depressed even. Uh, uh, they thought, we'll never get out of this. I had a sort of profit. I said, no, you have a strong economy, you have an excellent capital structure, you have good workforce, and so on. You'll get out of it eventually. But it, took them, it took them 10 years. Okay, well, let's talk about LA's economy that is already anticipating because of what we're seeing, a $400 million deficit. That means that services are going to be cut, people are going to be laid off, uh, they're going to be negotiating new contracts with the police and fire. The city can't be as generous as it was. What's going to turn around? What's going to be increased taxes that the city is going to rely on uh, to keep solvent, or, or, or are we going to be, be able to get out of this legally? Increased taxes without too much it could make the problem worse, as a matter of fact, rather than better. But uh, it's a move of desperation, but it may be necessary to do that. Uh, property tax, people haven't talked much about property taxes. When asset values go down, property taxes are going to go down as well. And the collections at the city and county level Revenues go down. way down. Yeah, they're yeah. going to go way down. This was also true in Japan, by the way. Uh, we're repeating that same experience. And so it has profound local effects. It's not just a national, it's also international, by the way, but it also has these local effects, absolutely. And how do we? weather it? Do we just you know, tighten our belt and live through it? Well, well, I think we have to batten down the hatches. We'll do whatever we can. Uh, I think the the local government, uh, the economy of the state and, and, and counties and so forth can can try to help. But there's a limit on what they could do, particularly with the fiscal deficit that we face on the statewide level and at the county level. So uh, there's not much we can do about it, frankly. I want to show you something that someone handed to me uh, before we went on the air. It's a Time magazine cover from 1972. And what does the headline say? Is the U.S. going broke? Uh, they handed me this to make the point that, look, we've been in trouble before. We can get out of trouble again. Are you that confident? I'm confident in the long run we'll get out of it. The long run is not six months or a year. The long run could be many years. It could be five, even ten years, as happened in Japan. This could happen. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were riding the crest of this excess during the bubble period, and people were so optimistic, they, they extended themselves so far. You know, the leverage rates they used in the, in the financial institutions, they would, they would borrow you know, 10 to 1 to, against their assets and, and spread themselves so thin. Um, there was a precursor of this with the long-term capital management firm, they remember, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, that had to go, had, had to be bailed out, basically, by, by the New York Fed. Um, and uh, we're sort of repeating that on a national level. Yeah, but I think also we have to repeat something we learned many years ago, and that is not to give in to fear either, right? Well, Franklin Roosevelt's famous, we think we have fear is fear itself. We can say that again today. I think it's a very apt. I think fear is a huge problem here. The president has been trying to give pep talks, essentially. He's like a coach coming out to tell the team, yeah. guys, you know, go out there, you're doing a great job, and so forth. I don't know how many people believe in that, as a matter of fact. His credibility is totally undermined. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure that it's simply a matter of giving a pep talk. All right. UCLA uh, economics professor, Michael Intrilligator, thanks very much for being with us. You're watching LA Business Today. We'll be right back.